How's it going? Ready for another review video. Another uh, fun evening here at Strouch Casa. We're in a different setting in uh, the middle boy's room, Mr. Colt, and his uh, cave bed here. So, um, anyway, I'm going to talk about protein synthesis and mutations. That's what the test is on tomorrow, in case you've been dozing off a little bit in the old class, which, I mean, who could do that? Come on, it's the most exciting part of your day. Um, anyway, so yes, yes, sir. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Um, so, protein synthesis. All right, remember that's basically going from DNA's instructions, okay, because DNA has the instructions on how to build a protein, um, but where the protein is made is not where DNA is. So, DNA is in um, the nucleus, as we all know, and the place where the protein is built is called the ribosome. So basically DNA has to get its set of instructions on what proteins to build and when to build them, has to get those sets of instructions to the ribosome. Okay, So there's two parts to this whole protein synthesis. There's transcription and then there's translation. So the transcription part is when DNA gives its message to messenger RNA. Okay, and that's a lot like the base pairing, you know, when DNA replicates, we have the base pairing rules, A's to T's, uh, C's to G's. Um, the base pairing rules come into effect when DNA is giving its message over to RNA, okay? So, uh, when DNA gives its message to RNA, remember, RNA doesn't have T's, it has U's. So, on the test, for instance... If it gives you a line of DNA and it wants you to find the amino acids that would be coded for that DNA, remember you'll have to go from DNA to RNA and then use the codon chart for amino acids. Okay. Um, and remember when you're going from DNA to RNA, if, if DNA has an A, it's going to match up with a U for RNA, not with a T. So that's transcription, DNA to RNA. Then translation occurs at the ribosome, the site of protein synthesis, the site of where the proteins are actually put together. So at the ribosome, the uh, translation occurs, and that's where the messenger RNA, uh, remember, sets of three, okay, sets of three are called a codon, and so sets of three match up with their anticodon, which is the set of three transfer RNA bases. So messenger RNA bases are called a codon, Transfer RNA bases are called an anticodon, and that is um, where they meet and match up. The important part of the about the transfer uh, RNA is that, just like it sounds, they're transferring the amino acids to the correct spot on the messenger RNA. So it's kind of like a little assembly line. The transfer RNA comes down, leaves the amino acid, goes down to the next one, next one, next one, and those codons and anticodons keep matching up. So remember, mRNA is codons, tRNA is anticodons, okay? Um, and the tRNA is the one that brings the amino acid to the right spot, okay? Uh, now, mutations, remember, mutations can occur when DNA replication happens, and... Well, isn't um, that like what the Ninja Turtles, what happened to the Ninja there Turtles? There you go. There's your mutations example. Right. Class dismissed. Um, so, yeah, mutations can occur when, when DNA, uh, basically, lots of different things. So there could be a substitution well, where the DNA... Like weird. Finish this so they can, we can talk about Ninja Turtles in a minute. So oh. um, DNA can substitute. So, you know, a T gets substituted for a G. So that would be a simple substitution. Um, a lot of times that doesn't have a huge effect because it might still code for the same amino acid like we talked about in class. Um, hey, if you're going to be in here, you can't be real loud like that. You're distracting people from learning this wonderful stuff. Anyway, um, the other two mutations, you have insertion and deletion. Those are going to cause, remember, the frame shift. A frame shift mutation is going to really change the sequence of amino acids and, um, you know, make a totally different protein because new amino acids are going to be putting, uh, put into place. So insertion and deletion are the ones that are not 
Um, not real good. Then you have the chromosomal mutations. Remember, those are like we worked with the chromosome lab the last few days, uh, where there might be a chromosome missing, an extra chromosome, a broken chromosome. Oh, you're copying me? Really? Ay, ay, ay. Um, and so there you have it. So now let's go over some questions and get this show on the road. First one, two, three, four, five questions are on the structure of DNA um, and, and how DNA and RNA differ even. But um, really, it's, uh, it's, if this kind of goes back to like the monomer of DNA would be what? A nucleotide. Um, which monomer is shown below and it shows you a nucleotide and you have to know that. Um, you know, what is DNA's job? Storing genetic information. So the first five are really kind of, again, more focused on the structure of DNA, but um, they're not anything that you haven't seen before. Then we get into actually talking, you know, looking at transcription and translation. Um, there's a question that that has the codon charts. You definitely need to know how to use those. It's the box style codon chart and it gives you the line of RNA and you just have to go through and um, figure out which uh, amino acids it, it codes for. Um, there's another one where it shows a diagram of DNA separating and a new strand being kind of created from the DNA it's single stranded and it has U's in it. So basically it's asking you, what is this new strand being made? Well, if it's single stranded and it has U's and it's directly kind of in touch with DNA, then it's messenger RNA. Um, which type of ribonucleic acid carries the coding information to the site of protein synthesis? Messenger RNA. When you go from DNA to messenger RNA, what's that process called? Like I said a minute ago, it's called transcription. Um, there's another one where you kind of have to go backwards. It gives you a line of amino acids, and you have to tell what messenger RNA it came from. And again, it gives you a chart. You have to just kind of go backwards like we talked about in class at one time. Uh, yes, Colt, what can I ask you? Uh, or what can, would you like to ask? Like this guy... Mm -hmm. He's just a regular guy, but then he turned into this. Is that a mutation? That would be a, a type of mutation for sure. Um, remember, if you see a diagram, most of the diagrams, if it's a, if it's a single line, that's going to be messenger RNA. If it's little chunks kind of floating around, that's going to be the transfer RNA. Isn't a single okay. line, that means they're dead? No. Um, well, if you, yeah, a heart monitor, sure, but this is not that. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, okay, um, what, what happens for an insertion mutation? Well, nitrogen bases are added. Insertion, it's pretty simple. Um, there's another one about mutations where you have to basically just take DNA, a strand of DNA, and you have to code it all the way out to find what amino acids it codes for. Um, there's actually 35 questions. Um, which statement best describes the most important effect on variation in, in a species from a change in the DNA code for a gene? I know that. Um, Oh, you know that one? That's question. That's answer C. Oh, you think so? It's wait, C. Wait, wait, no, no, no. The, the gene maybe the some size gene still function from... normally. No, it's B. No, it's actually D. The mutation may allow the population to respond to a change in environment. Well, now you just told them the answer to one of the questions. Well, if they're smart, they'll watch this and then they'll know the answer. Um, watch this. It talks about a chromo, you know, kind of the definition of a chromosomal mutation. That's G. G? No. Uh, H. No. J. There's two questions here that talk about how our genes can be affected by the environment. Um, I'll be honest, I know we haven't talked about that a lot in class, but it's going to be on the CA, and I wanted y'all to kind of get used to it. 
So really, it's pretty simple. Just know that the environment, you know, the gene expression of, of you, how our genes are expressed, can be affected by the environment. So if it's talking about the temperature and the temperature's changing the color of something's fur, well, that just means gene expression is regulated by temperature. Um, or if it's talking about, um, you know, curly wings or straight wings of a fruit fly, again, being affected by temperature, then, again, that's just talking about um, the environment, the temperature will affect how the gene is shown. Stop, hush. Then the last five questions are back to Punnett squares. So there's some review questions in here from the last test. Um, no, there's one blood type question. So remember, A and B are dominant over O. Um, and AB is codominant. So if there's an A and a B, it can be type AB. Um, and then the rest of it, you should know. So there's one blood type, one, two, two regular Punnett squares, not dihybrids, and then two uh, about meiosis. So remember, meiosis helps with genetic variation. So that is pretty much it. I'll be in class in the morning if you have any questions. And uh, good luck. Sorry this is late, but we had a wonderful destination imagination uh, event to go to for Mr. Colt. So it was his big night. And, um, oh, for the girls in, well, several periods, but, uh, but um, certain girls that were, were helping with the, with the wife's uh, gift, you know, the necklace that I was getting for my wife. It was her birthday today, so thanks for your help. She really liked it. Yeah. Um, so, and you helped pick it out too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Y'all have a good night. I think this Bye. has gone on long enough. See y'all tomorrow. Bye.